case I want to take some notes, I got a pen and paper by me. Ignore that. <laughs> yeah. Actually, I, I just hit the record button already, but uh, okay. no, it's, All right. okay. it's okay. It's kind of funny. Um, hey guys, my name is Kendrick and welcome to ENFP Mail. Today, I have the pleasure of interviewing Laura Miller. Did I say that correctly? Yes. Awesome. So Laura, welcome. And uh, it's a pleasure for me to come and interview you. And uh, I'd like to get a little bit of your backstory first. So how did you kind of get into Myers-Briggs and off to start off with? Okay, I started learning about Myers-Briggs way back in high school psychology class. Yeah. We had to take a personality test. And at that time, I scored ISTJ on it, which kind of interestingly enough became my official OP typing. Nice. <laughs> but, 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 but afterwards, I, I had a lot of, I had a long period of time time where I mistyped it because, uh, you know, this wasn't some, some rigorous test, uh, test I took. It wasn't the official MBTI, MBTI or anything. It was just some, it was just some short questionnaire. And, and then I, I read about, read about the descriptions and I guess it painted sensing types specifically ISTJs in kind of a, like a really negative light. Oh no. But like they're really, they're really anal retentive and they're very closed, closed to new ideas. And, and I, I just, I didn't relate to all of that in, in the description. So, so like, like many people, I, I mistyped myself as an intuitive type and and then later on, I'd read these books and I'd take all these tests online. And I usually I would score as an, one of the four introverted intuitive types. And, and, and that's the way I saw myself for, for a long time. And I, I kind of saw myself relating a lot to INTP and, and, INF, and INFP. I, I didn't think I was this this rigid J type and um, it, and I read about cognitive functions too and I, I figured yeah I think I use SI and and NE so that kind of eliminated the possibilities of INTJ and INFJ even though I often scored those types on tests and and I got into objective personality just kind of by chance because I was on Facebook and I subscribed to several typology related groups and on the side they have the suggest the link to suggested groups and one of them said object it said unofficial objective personality study group and it was the word objective that kind of attracted me um, because I was curious I'm like okay what what, what does that mean and and I know that there's a problem with a lot of these typology groups. They're not very objective and people are mistyping themselves and there's, there's discrimination against types, especially sensing types. And, 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 and so I thought, well, you know, maybe this is a more objective way of, of measuring type. And so many of those online tests aren't very objective at all. They're not very well constructed. So so it so I was kind of curious about that group and I wanted to check it out. So I did. And then I got into this group and it wasn't, and I thought this is just another MBTI group, you know, with an emphasis on objectivity. That that's kind of what I thought I was getting into. And it kind of turned out that it's kind of a whole new typology into itself. It's because because it was 512 types not 16 i wasn't expecting that and then people were talking about feminine and masculine functions and animals and glass play and all this stuff and, and i had no idea what they were even talking about and i felt kind of kind of embarrassed i'm like oh my gosh i'm walking into unknown unknown territory because i was expecting something totally different and and then the people there were, were really helpful explain what i needed to know and then I got really curious and I signed up for the signed up for the class and I've been watching all, all the videos and I got really 
interest in the typology and I love the objective approach that that they're taking to this and I, th I think it's great so yeah here I am oh great that was, that was a really good uh, really good answer um I'd, I'd like to um, actually it's really funny because you were definitely blasting really well for just like <laughs> uh, which actually leads on to the next question that I have is what is your animal stack based on uh, um, blast play sleep consume and they, they typed me as consume last which was kind of surprised about actually because you know it, it, it's weird because initially i thought it was going to be missing play because because i feel like i'm introverted and i, I think i maybe i'm extroverted and playful on here but but it's because i'm because i'm comfortable and but sometimes it's hard for me to just socially engage and chit chat with people when, when there's not really a clear purpose to it but then Dave and Shannon, when they watched when they watched my video, that they said, "Well, I see a lot of play energy, because you're asking the tribe a lot of questions, and you're trying to, you know, get information and feedback from the tribe, you know." And I, and I think that is kind of my preferred way of learning and understanding, rather than just quietly sitting in a corner reading a long book on something. So um, earlier, you mentioned that you did read quite a few books on oh yeah yeah well not entirely closed off to new information yeah. right but it's kind of strange that you are consumed last because other individuals that i've t kind of spoken to who has consumed last won't even read a book they'll kind of just read the you know the yeah title, yeah the title, and I, and I, read that, I read that too and and they were having trouble determining the, the last animal they weren't really sure but shannon said that she thought she saw more energy dominance than information dominance so she put she put consume as the last animal and i didn't know that sleep last made much sense either because because i am you know really introspective and into my own own head a lot but then when i read more about sleep it's kind of like well so, so my sleep is is si and fi together Right. But it's kind of like in a demon state, I, I guess, when I think about it, because it's kind of like reminiscing about the past or oh, this bad event happened. And I was so hurt by that emotionally, FI, and I don't want that to happen again. So maybe that's more like a demon state. Uh, well, it seems like it's, uh, it's a demon because your, your savior function is um you have blast first so that's your first savior and then your second savior is your play so th those seems to be your two savior and then you know kind of like what they mentioned that your third one which is your sleep it's kind of like your hobby like you, mm -hmm. you do, like do it once in a while but it's not like <laughs> your obsession you know yeah and i mean that could be where my interest in personality psychology comes from too you know this this typology stuff and you know, trying to learn and, and understand myself. Yeah, that could be, it is indeed your hobby, right? So that makes sense where it you- It is my uh, hobby, yeah. yeah. But, but, but I, know, I know for a while there, I kind of thought consume was my hobby animal. So um, I'm actually got a call with, with Dave later this week. So I was gonna talk to him, talk to him more about that because I'm, I'm not sure I, I agree with everything they, they say about, about missing consume. Yeah, that would be. Although what I do relate to is, do you know Jonah Dempsey? I uh, no, I don't. Okay, well, well, he anyway he he's been making some YouTube videos about these these animal stackings, and 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 he kind of looks at them like attentional modes. So 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 he says like like people that are missing consume, kind of just have trouble listening to people and. And sometimes I have trouble just sitting there and just having to listen to somebody and not being able to engage any other animals. So, so it's, it's it's easier for you to kind of go to lecture mode or or playful mode than to sit there and listen to someone talk to you about stuff. Yeah, yeah, and not be not being able to say anything back or not being able able to go into my sleep mode. I see. I see. It's kind of like I just have to fully fully pay attention, you know, and I can't do anything else. Oh, okay. I see. Gotcha. Um, 
people used to criticize the, criticize me for that when I was younger. So, do you think you've gotten better at that since you've gotten older? Yeah, I think so. Um, I, I want to ask you about two areas that I kind of noticed as quite interesting uh, on your um, function stack. Um, it seems like you because you have um, feminine TE and feminine NE. Mm -hmm. It seems like your play is very feminine, mm -hmm. while, while your internal world is extremely masculine with that yeah. SI and masculine FI. So, can you let's talk about your um, outer world first? So, how does that come out? Do you come across? Do people think you're very feminine then, or are you extremely playful with other people? Um, I I, I don't know about. I don't know if extremely feminine is the right word, but, yeah. but, but I, I do think that they think I'm, you know, you know, nice and friendly and, you know, approachable, considerate of others, you know, non, you know, not, not punchy. Yeah. And, and, the, and then, but then if you get to know me on the, on the inside, then I have like values that, that I hold strongly onto that I don't budge. So then I, then I start to become more stubborn, stubborn and punchy. So maybe soft, softer on the outside, harder in the inside. Yeah. Yeah. I can see that. Now, and how does that masculine SI kind of uh, manifest itself? Because, uh, you know, if you, you were mentioning earlier that in the, in, in the olden days, kind of people have a negative connotation to people with, you know, I, S, I kind of dominant uh, personality, but do you think, do you, do you think that actually is true in your case? Because you do have that masculine S, I, and people might think, oh, you're really, you know, you're just living in the past maybe all the time or, or you're really strict with the rules or control or organize. Um, well, I, I, I kind of was like that. If I'm going to be honest my, with myself, I, I, I could be like that a bit, a bit when I was younger. I, I think I just didn't want to quite, quite accept it or, or want to be seen, seen that way. But, but I do tend to see the rules and the facts as fixed. You know, this is, this is what, this, this is what, what, this is what they are. And, and just having kind of like a, like a, like a timeline kind of memory is, is what David and Shannon noticed when I, when I submitted that video, like, like I can explain some, some event in chronological order and, and this happened this many years ago and, and, and being able to, to, to give the details of that situation. Um, and what um, line of work do you do, Laura? I'm a librarian. Okay, is that very ISTJ like or it S can be. Yeah. It yeah, some some aspects are because like like putting the books in order, for example. I mean, you know, there, there there's there's a system that, that you use and, and if you don't adhere to that that system, people aren't gonna be able to find what they're looking for. It's not gonna work for the not gonna T E work for the tribe. And then right. there's an an SI factual factual system that that we use to to organize the books and the materials and and you know and then sometimes you know in, in my job I'm kind of in SC, SITE blast mode yeah. a lot mm -hmm. because because I'm showing them okay here's how you search for a book book on the catalog you first do do this step you click here and then the farther limit limit down the search results you, you go here and then you click, click here to see where in the library, library it is. And, or, or when I'm showing them how to use a piece of technology or, or equipment, it, it's a lot of, you know, just step-by-step -step SITI kind of stuff. I feel like yeah. you, got, you, you pretty much got your perfect job for your personality. Just based on what you kind of <laughs> Well, um, that, that part, that part of it, I'm, I'm, you know, really comfortable with and, and good at, but then there's this whole other side that the people side where I'm not so good at because, because we do get, get customers that come in with, with a lot of emotional baggage and I'm not always, always well equipped, equipped to handle it. You know, you handle, handle someone, 
someone that's being kind of kind of rude to you and or somebody that that doesn't want to follow follow the, the library the library procedures and yeah. you know and th they just think you're trying to control them and, and you're not you're just, in my mind I, I see it as just trying to make things fair for everybody yeah and they don't see it that way you know there's this e you know exxp type that doesn't want to be controlled <laughs> you know um but 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 yeah i think that i think sometimes the people side of it you know because it's that 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 that, that f that f part of it which is which is my demon and so sometimes somebody will will talk rude to me and i sometimes i i, I overreact and there's a story i don't know if you saw my typing video or not but not yet okay well, well you, you you should <laughs> um but but anyway I had this customer that came and she was demanding all these things from me at once. She had a pile of books she wanted to, to have checked out. Then she had another pile of books that she wanted to return. Then she had a pile of books that she didn't want to check out. She just wanted to request for later. And then she's like, well, there's slips in these books. Don't take the slips out. And it was just all the stuff thrown at me at, thrown at me at once. And I was just trying to clarify what she wanted and, and I was getting confused and she started questioning my competence and my ability to my, do my job effectively. And I felt hurt by that and um, which is kind of rude to me. And I slammed the library book on the table and I walked out on her. And, oh my God. Yeah. And, and I ended up losing the job. So that was. Oh no. Sorry to hear that. Yeah. So that was that was like that was like a low point point in my life, but but that is that is the 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 side of my job that I need to work on, and that's. Um, there was something I want to say based on the kind of uh, what you just said to me. So basically, it seems like you were actually having issues with individuals that was using a lot of also fe. Not just EXXP, but also oh, with really? FE. Yeah. Because it's kind of like what you said, you know, like the person was acting really rude to you. Mm -hmm. um, now, you're, you're a TE user, meaning you like to troubleshoot, right? There's a problem, you're going to go find a solution, you're going to fix it, right? Problem, yeah. problem solution, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Basically, yeah. yeah. But then people with FE, it's a little bit different. It's kind of like, oh, oh like you need to kind of like follow it. Like there's almost like a step you kind of miss in between. Yeah. It's, it's kind of like with you, it's like problem, solution, problem, solution, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But like if you were using like FE, it would be like problem, empathize, uh, and then calm the person down, and then solution. So you're kind of like <laughs> missing that like. Exactly. And, and, I, and I've kind of had to learn to incorporate, incorporate that more in my interactions with, with other people. I've got to do that, do that step in the middle, even if I think they're really – they're being really stupid or unreasonable yeah. or even even though I know we can't provide what they what they're seeking you still got to emphasize you know you still got to empathize with them yeah. and and then sometimes I mean I guess just emotionally connect and, and engage with them and yeah. sometimes I have the bad tendency of just okay okay you know this is just another problem to solve this is just another customer to serve and and, and yeah, I do it competently and effectively, but maybe I could be emotionally, emotionally engaging more with them. I think, I think you're putting a lot of, because I, so even though I'm, I'm, an, I'm an ENFP, um, I actually have a lot of ISTJ friends and I don't know if it's like a natural connection that we're, mm -hmm. and we're naturally curious of each other, but, um, mm -hmm. um, but I did notice that they have a strong emphasis on efficiency like, mm -hmm. you know, let's do this the, the fastest way possible, mm -hmm. you know? And, but then sometimes efficiency gets in the way of like, human connection, right? Like, yeah. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's kind of like, yes, it's not two steps, not like problem solution. It's problem empathize solution, you know? So, mm -hmm. but then, you know, empathizing, you know, I don't know if that drives you crazy because like, Oh my God, it's such a waste of time. I had to go like make this person feel not happy first, you know, let's just get this over with. Let's just get yeah, yeah. Sometimes. Yeah. Well, 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 I remember David and Shannon in one of their videos that they had, they had a really good way of like telling TE apart from Effie. And, and they said that like TE is like 
let's, if it works, then everybody can be happy. Right. And then Effie was kind of, kind of, kind of the reverse. Let's make, make everyone happy first and then it will work. Yeah. I, I, you know, it's, it's going to be one of those tough things, right? Because 50% of the people you'll speak to have FE and the other 50% has TE, right? So yeah, it's like a, you know, a flip of coin. You don't know what you're going to get. And if you get someone that uses TE, Hey, no problem. They're cool with your method of just, Hey, problem solution. Let's get it done. Let's be efficient. Mm -hmm. No problem. But then you get the, yeah. especially the heavy FE users, like let's say an ESFJ or um, an ENFJ. Oh my God. They, they'll probably get really upset at you, you know, for, for, for missing that, that middle part, you know, mm -hmm. like problem and solution. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's, some, that's something I've been tr trying to work, trying to work more on. I've, you know, taking these different workshops on, you know, dealing with, you know, difficult customers or angry customers. And that's always a key point that they, that they mention is to emphasize with them. You got to do that stuff. Now, kind of like go back to one of the things that you mentioned earlier, uh, you mentioned that, you know, in the old typology kind of setting, they kind of painted, you know, ISTJs in a bad light saying that you guys are close minded. You're not open to new information. And, you know, in, in theory, I think that's kind of what they kind of labeled ISTJs as. But from my personal experience, I've actually met ISTJs who were way more open-minded than a lot of EPs, for example, or, or even intuitive types. Mm -hmm. so I, I think at the end of the day, I don't think it's based on um, typology. I think it's based on the person, you know? Like, it's kind of like what David Shan said, like someone with low confidence will not be open to learning new things. Well, someone that has a higher sense of confidence and, you know, they, they, they like themselves more. They're more open to learning more and, you know, improving themselves as a person, Yeah. you know? So... Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I was, I've been shocked at like, I've, I've had ISTJ friends who were just so open-minded about things. And I'm like, is this person really an ISTJ? Yeah. Well, are you familiar with the big five personality? Um, I, I, I know about it, but I don't follow it as much as the MBTI. Oh, okay. But well, anyway, they, they've got, they've got a scale called openness to experience. Right. Yeah. And, and I, and I, and I take the test and I always score high on openness to experience, you know, and, and, and they always kind of say, well, that, that supposedly correlates with NP types. Right. Well, maybe. I, mean, I know the correlation's not 100%. Almost 100%? No, 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 no that's not 100% correlation between the, the MBTI and the big five. Right, right. But maybe they coexist together, you know? Like maybe yeah. they're not used to it. You know what I mean? Like. Because you could be an extrovert, but maybe you're not super extroverted as an extrovert. You know? Yeah. Yeah, because, well, like, like if I'm S-I-T-E, and then I got blast and play as my top two, two animals, I'm technically more extroverted overall. Yeah, you're, you're definitely one of the most extroverted ISTJs out there. <laughs> <laughs> Which is funny because, I mean, I would take all these typology tests and... I almost always score introverted and I'll score fairly high on introverted. I'll score 80 to 90%. But I think the way that they're measuring introversion, it's like social introversion. Like, like, do you want to go out every Friday night or do you just want to stay home? And, and I just want to stay home. And, and kind of like I said, with socializing for me, and I think maybe this is, a TE related thing, like, 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 like it's got to have a purpose. And, you know, and sometimes it's hard for me to just, to just hang out and, and just chit chat, you know, it's kind of like, you know, maybe I see it like affecting my ability to do other things, get, get, get other things to, to get other things done or, or maybe it's related to demon feeling because I'm really afraid to kind of like closely emotionally connect with people. Like, like I fear, like I fear that rejection or so, so that might, that, that I think there's an anxiety component there and that might play into it. Now, when we're talking right here, you know, I'm, you know, I'm totally, I'm totally comfortable. There's definitely a purpose and a structure to what we're doing. I, I know the topic well, and, and yeah, I'm comfortable. And, and it's like that on the, on the Facebook group too. You know, I'm, I'm in a comfortable setting. 
you know, you know what's really interesting about you, uh, Laura, is um, you're a double decider, right? And yeah. uh, so you can kind of see the point of view from the tribe, and you can see your point of view, and you kind of have a relative balance uh, between mm-hmm. both. Now, the the reason why you're it, it's what you what kind of like your function stack is interesting is because your FI is masculine, but it's your demon, and yeah. your, it's your TE is feminine, but it's your savior. Mm-hmm. It's, it's almost like it's not even a 60 40 kind of um, difference between your tribe and self. It's almost like 51% you know, tribe and 49% self as a result of having that like feminine TE and that masculine FI. Oh, you, really? Yeah. You, but like, based on that kind of observation that I made, do you relate to that kind of to, to what I just said? Like, do you feel like you're very close with your kind of identity and also with you know, how you serve the tribe in a, in a sense? Yeah, I, I do. I do think I do think I'm quite balanced between the two. Like, like I'm able to to meet the tribe needs without losing sight without losing sight of my own needs. And I think in general, I do do that fairly well. I, I think though, in general, I might put a little more weight on the tribe than myself. I mean, just slightly more. Yes. So like, like, for example, I, I belong to, to a board game group. And, and so, and we'll, and we, we meet at various times in various locations. We kind of, kind of change it up every, every now and then kind of based on, on what the group wants. And so let's say the majority of the group wants to meet on Tuesday night and, and the Tuesday night doesn't, doesn't, you know, work, you know, doesn't work for me, but it works for the majority, you know? I can I can deal with that decision. It, you know, it's it's not that big of a deal to me, even though it's not what I want personally, because I can see that it works well for the majority of people. And I will still make my I will still make my needs known though. I'll say, well, you know, Tuesdays don't work well for me. I'll still put that out there, but but I'm kind of more about, you know, what works for the for the most number of people or or when when we have a location that we want to meet at. It may be a little farther than I want to tra- would personally want to travel, but I can see that it works best for the largest number of people. So I think that's kind of where, where that tribe above self self kind of comes in. It's yes, that that's very clear actually how you uh, just described that. <laughs> yeah, 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 but but yeah, yeah, but yeah. but it was funny because initially I thought I was. I thought maybe I'd be a single decider, double observer, just because I, you know, you know, even though I'm able to do the balance between self and tribe pretty well, I I do feel a lot of tension between the two. Yes. Like, like, here's what, here's what the tribe, the tribe thinks. Here's, here's me, you know, here's what I think. And, and I do worry a lot about tribe validation, you know, I, I, and what, what the tribe what, what the tribe thinks of me, but 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 it's not that uh, single observers don't ever have those issues. Maybe with single observers they have a blind spot. Well, you don't have a blind spot because you can. The re, the reason why you feel the tension is because you see both. You, you right. See both. Yeah. Yeah. Because because I think I know you know there's some exxj types, like like they they're 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 so killing themselves. For the tribe and they're, they're just kind of just out of touch with what they really want for themselves in life and i don't think i have that problem to that degree or ixxp types that um they're kind of out of out of touch with 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 the needs of the tribe because they're so absorbed into themselves so so I don't think I I don't think I have either I don't think I have either of those those extremes. Well, let's let's go talk about your. Extreme. But I do get tidal waves about chaos. <laughs> I know I get that. Yes. So let's go to that then. Let's go talk about the extremes that you have, uh, which is which is actually you know my opposite. Um, so let's talk about your savior obsession, which is control. And okay. we'll talk about your demon, your your biggest fear, which is chaos. So, what what does that feel like for you to, when chaos happens? Can you give us? Can you, can you tell a story of like, an, an instant in your life where, 
just a massive chaos happened and you lose complete, you lost con complete control and you absolutely freaked out. Mm -hmm. Well, this is what I, what I already said earlier in the interview, but, but with that customer I was helping, I felt like there was a lot of chaos or I, I perceived it as a lot of chaos anyway, because she had, I felt like she had all these demands that she was putting on me at once, all these different, all these different things that I, that I had to figure out. And she wanted it in a very specific particular way. And I had to figure out exactly what it, what it was she wanted. And I felt like I couldn't act unless I, I had all the information and I knew what I was doing. And and, and so I think I think that might have been might have been an example it might have been an example of a freak out and and just just in other situations on my job like like when we have several different people that all want help at the same time or when when a when the computer or or a machine starts to malfunction or there's an issue with we have a building issue and and I kind of start to panic, you know, and like, oh my God, you know. And what 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 causes that panic though? Like, have you kind of guess, kind of, you know, any guess why you freak out, um, you know, when when those things happen? Well, I, I think it's because I'm afraid that I'm not going to be able to fix it, and. You know, people. You know, people are counting on me. They're they're counting on me for things things to work okay. So then, then if they don't work okay, um, you know, the people are going to be upset. Um, I look bad. I I could lose my job if I don't handle all the chaos. And then if I lose my job, uh, then I don't have a secure paycheck. <laughs> So sometimes what will happen is one thought will spiral into other bad thoughts. Okay, here's a, here's a chaotic situation, but I have to handle this. If I don't handle it well, I could lose my job. If I lose my job, I don't have financial security. If I don't have financial security, I could lose my house or, you know, or something dumb like that. And you know, it gets kind of ridiculous. So I always have to step back and say, okay, okay, take a deep breath. Have you ever thought of like kind of setting boundaries for certain 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 types of those thoughts? So, for example, like um, you know, I, I don't know how many concrete example because I don't work in a library, but you know, maybe the problem is not that huge, and if you mess up, maybe your employer will cut you some slack just because you know overall your track record states that you're actually a good worker and mm -hmm. you don't really mess up too often. And uh, you know, once in a while, you know, this kind of stuff does happen, and it's not your fault. Oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I mean, I, I'm also a type six on the Enneagram and, and sixes tend to do a lot of worst case scenario kind of thinking. Right. That, make, that makes sense. <laughs> that's that's yeah. fair. And, but I mean, I kind of had a similar incident happen a couple weeks ago. Um, my manager um, says, come to my office. And then he wanted to talk to me and and then he said, he said it was, he said that some, someone else expressed concern that, that I didn't seem like I was confident enough in, in, in some area, some specific area of, area of work. And then I started to worry that, that maybe my performance evaluation wasn't going to be very good. And, and it turned out to be very good overall, you know. I still got exceeds expectations. I still got my merit raise, but it was just that one little part. And I think he just wanted to, to inform me of that before I got that evaluation, before I got that evaluation in writing. So, so yeah, but, but sometimes I'll, I'll see like some piece of criticism and, and I, I kind of just blow it out of, blow it out of proportion. And it's just, that one little thing it's not m me as a person you know sometimes i do tend to take things kind of personally and it can be oversensitive and 
and for a while I thought it was a feeling type, you know, because I, because I'm oversensitive. I take things personally, I can get emotional, but, but I really think, you know, now that I've learned more about objective personality, it's, 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 it's just demon FI. I mean, well, I mean, we're all humans, right? We're all going to have, mm-hmm. we're still, we're all going to have feelings still, you know? Yeah. So I don't, I, I think that's normal to, to feel yeah. anxiety and whatnot. Yeah. yeah. Um, now, you mentioned earlier that, uh, well, before the interview started, that Dave and Shan told you, you need, you need to be more like an ENFP. So do you have any specific questions for me about, about that? Because you're talking to one. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I, I think he just said, well, he just said like to, to learn to it, it embrace embrace the chaos more and you know be more comfortable any guessing and even when when things kind of go wrong or unexpected learn learn to laugh at yourself and well let me ask you a question so do you always do things a certain way in your life like do you have like a set way to do everything not everything, no. Like, like most things, is, is there like a set, like do you have a set routine for a lot of the stuff that you do? Like when you cook, you cook a certain way, like you prepare your kitchen a certain way? Yes, or? And, yes and no. Now, when, when I cook things, I, I, do tend, I do tend to follow the recipe, especially if it's something that I've, never, that I've never cooked before because I don't have a good concept in my head of how it's supposed to work. Like, what ingredients are, are essential, you know, what steps are essential and, and which ones are kind of more optional. Can we, can we alter this amount without, without affecting the result, the result too much? So, so yeah, in cooking, it, it's pretty routinized, but, but let's say when, when I'm getting ready for work, I mean, there's certain things that need to be done, but I don't always do them in exactly the same order. And I don't don't get up at, at exactly the same time every day because I've got the kind of work schedule where it varies from day to day and, and, and week to week. So I got the luxury of being able to sleep in some days. And, um, you know, like some days I might get dressed first and, you know, because I, I showered the night, I showered right before I went to bed. So I don't have to take a shower in the morning. Other times I shower first. And then get dressed. And sometimes I, I eat breakfast and then I go shower. So, so, so like some, some things like that, you know, it, it, it's varied a little bit. So I, I can't say, I mean, I can't say that I'm strictly, and, and that's one part of SI that I didn't, didn't agree with is just like, like, like this idea that, that, that SI dominance, they're very anal about their routines. They do things exactly the same way, the same way all, all the time. They, they got a strict schedule that they adhere to. And I, don't, and, and I don't really do, I don't really do that as long as everything gets done, done by the deadline. That's what matters to me. Like, like uh, deadlines, uh, I do take very seriously, but, but, but I don't say, okay, I'm going to spend 15 minutes doing this and 30 minutes doing this. I'm going to eat from this time to this time every day. And then I'm going to work out from this time to this time. I, I don't really do that. Now, let me ask you, are you, are you a parent? No, no. So you, you don't have kids. Okay. Um, I, I guess I wanted to give you an example, actually. So my, my, my mom is an ISFJ. Okay. So, so not quite the same as you because you have TE and she has FE. And, uh, but, uh, instead of, uh, FI, she has, I guess, TI then, but you do have that one thing in common, which is the dominant SI and that weak kind of like fourth function NE, right? Mm-hmm. So the way my mom parents is a very strict, specific way. So like the way she parented me is not the same way she parented my sister, which is the middle child as the way she parented my youngest sister. So there's three of us in the family. When, when we were kids, my, my mom went to a fortune teller and my mom really believes in like psychics and fortune teller and all that stuff. 
like, I don't know if you do, but uh, she does. I don't know if it's like a low NE thing, like not being able to see the future. So you're going to ask someone to <laughs> tell you kind of what your future is. I think that might sound more like low NI, actually. It may be, maybe. But um, so essentially, the fortune teller told my mom that uh, something's bad going to happen to my middle sister when she's 16. And because my mom heard that, my mom spent her, her, my, my mom basically controlled my sister the entire time like she was growing up. And my sister rebelled so hard. And my sister is also a control person. She's also an IJ. She's an INFJ. Okay. Interesting. So, so an IJ is controlling an IJ, which is very <laughs> funny. Yeah. Well, I mean, because I mean, I, I can relate sometimes to this EXXP, don't control me, bro. I mean, I yeah. have some of that too. I think everybody. Right. I think everybody does. And if I'm going to be placed in a strict bureaucracy or a dictatorship, I mean, yeah, of course I'm going to try to rebel and of course I'm going to complain, you know, but I think at the same time, I, I do, I do tend to lean more on the side of, you know, I think the rules in a, in a general sense, the rules are there for, for, for a good reason, you know, to, you know, to, to avoid chaos, to, to make things fair for people. So because my, my mother was so paranoid of chaos happening to my sister, she pretty much did the exact same thing the whole time my sister was growing up, which is control her. Now, because my mom was trying to control her, the result that, she, that, 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 that the control caused was rebellion, and rebellion is chaos, right? So my sister would cause so much chaos in the household, whether she would hang out with a bad crowd or she would uh, you know, get into smoking or trying drugs. Um, and my mother would, the same solution that she would come up with is the same, which is control, even more control, even more control. <laughs> yeah. But if she applied a little bit of NE in the situation, which is, okay, let's look at the connections. Okay, let's see like kind of like the result of kind of like the control. The clear result is it's causing more chaos. So why shouldn't, why don't you try something different? Because if you keep doing the same thing, you're going to get the same result, right? So if you want to, mm -hmm. you want to get a different result, you need to do something different. And, you know, people who use NE likes different things. They like, they like options. They like, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, trying different stuff. So uh, because my mother has low NE, she didn't try different stuff. She, when she should have tried something else. Maybe try a different parenting style. Maybe just let her be or maybe be more nice to her. I don't know. Something, something different. But because she didn't, chaos, the, the chaos tidal wave hit my mom mm -hmm. so hard as a result. Yeah. 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 So that's kind of like, like an example of someone that's kind of like not using the NE as well, but it, it seems like for you, it's kind of not, not that bad, you know? No, I don't think so. Um, it's, 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 it's hard for me to explain like how to be an ENFP because I kind of do it already uh, on a regular basis, but I'm not really afraid of chaos. Like if, if I'm going to like, I'll, um, have you, have you heard of Toastmasters? Yes. Have you done it? I did it a long time ago. Okay. So, have you ever done a prepared speech? Way back when I was in college. When you were in college and going to Toastmasters, did you ever do a prepared speech for Toastmasters? Yes. And uh, how long did you, how long did you take you to prepare for that uh, prepared speech? Um, it, it, it depends on the speech. Um, it could be anywhere from 30 minutes to maybe two or three hours. So you kind of like write a plan and then you would do a talk about it. I mean, you do have high blast, right? So you're probably pretty good at talking. <laughs> but, but I mean, I'm not always totally confident, like, especially if it's something I don't know much about because I don't want to tell people Ron and I don't want to mislead people with Ron information. I don't want others to think I'm, think I'm incompetent. Yeah. Yeah. Cause in fact, when I first read about the animals, I, I tight myself up upside down with them. I, I thought I thought I had low blast and play and high sleep and consume. And, and you know, at the time I was seeing myself as a highly introverted, introspective, introspective, introspective person. And and I'm, you know, I'm staying at home most of the time and not going out much. So well, um the, the reason why I bring up Toastmasters is. So like uh, I'm an ex I'm an ENFP so I'm a chaos monkey supposedly right according to David mm -hmm. yeah I can't tell you how many times 
I went to a Toastmasters meeting like five minutes literally before, before I have a, a, a seven minute speech prepared. I have mm-hmm. nothing, absolutely nothing prepared. I go in my car, I quickly write something down on a piece of paper, just five minutes before the, the Toastmasters. <laughs> Yeah. And and that kind of thing would, would totally freak me out because I'd be like, how am I ever going to pull, pull this off? What are the people going to think that I didn't, that I didn't come prepared, you know? And. Cause uh, in, in, in my mindset, I, I, I'm thinking. But then it's like, if you're probably thinking, Oh wow. She prepared two hours, you know? <laughs> well, no, that's not what I'm thinking. Well, like what I'm thinking is like, these people, they have no idea what I'm going to talk about. They have no idea what this, like, anything about this, if I say something that, you know, might not be organized or it might not be in a specific order, you know, SI, you know, kind of like specific order, they're not going to know that. So uh, whatever, I'll just go there and I'll talk about the stuff and, and I'll make it entertaining because entertainment kind of diffuses a lot of the issues in your yeah. and I'll just wing it and it usually works out just fine. Um, yeah. And uh, so it's kind of like, I'm okay with, I'm okay with the end result of I'm, I'm outcome independent with like my winging kind of okay and, and yeah. in a way like I was kind of tr- I purposely did it also like I purposely did not prepare like there was a specific reason why I did not I did not over prepare mm-hmm. I felt like when you go to Toastmasters Toastmasters is all about practicing um, yeah. being spontaneous right like like thinking on your feet so I figured okay if I have a seven minute speech and I'm thinking on my feet this is a good way for me to practice being in a chaotic situation so if a real chaotic situation happens outside the safe environment of Toastmasters, I'm going to be okay because I've had practice already kind of like, you know. Right. Yeah. That's, that's a very good tip. Very good. Yeah. So it's, it's like purposeful chaos that you're doing to yourself, you yeah. know, in, in a safe environment because no one's going to really hurt you in Toastmasters. It's pretty right. safe. And, and I remember, remember in Toastmasters too, we'd have something called table topics yeah. and that was impromptu speaking. Because we didn't know what the topic topic would be until we got there. Yeah. But but it wasn't seven minutes. It was like maybe one maybe one to two minutes. Yeah. So how did you do in those table topics? I didn't do very well. <laughs> I, I always did better in the in the prepared speeches. And what was the biggest issue with you with the table topics? Um. Well. It, it, I think it was just the un- unexpected, like, like, like I didn't know, didn't know the topic and, and I, and, and I feel like, like I didn't know, know enough to, to speak about it or to even, to even organize my thoughts because it was just kind of, it was just kind of, kind of on the spot. Now, now some, now some meetings I was more successful than others, you know, but location, I, I just get get some topic and I, and I totally, and I totally go blank, you know, cause. So um, because you're an ISTJ, you, you, you pref- you're like an ST reporter, right? Yeah. Um, and the opposite of that is NF. So you're kind of li- living in woo woo, woo woo land as kind of like David Shan would describe. Um, yeah. So when you're doing table topics, you know, they tell you that you can do anything you want, right? You don't have to talk about the topic that they give you. You can you can spin it in any different direction that you yeah. would. Yeah, and I think that's kind of where I'm a little too too rigid because I, I my brain tends to think kind of concretely. Okay, they gave me this topic, I better talk on that topic they gave me. Otherwise, it, it feels like cheating. It it's kind of like, and sometimes I have the same kind of a problem in job interviews, you know. And I feel like sometimes maybe I over prepare for them so then maybe I come off more rehearsed more awkward and just less I don't know myself spontaneous like like I'm doing too much ST reporting when I should just be more NF woo woo I, I um because they'll ask me a question and and I'll, and I'll feel like well I don't have an example loaded up for that exact question but I can see how it kind of relates. It kind of relates to this. So, so I think I've, yeah, I've kind of had to learn to, to use that any, to kind of use that, that any more and, and expand more. Am I making sense to you? Yeah, no, completely. Um, I, I just came up with so many different questions for you. Um, after what you just said that, uh, so number one, my first comment is that it seems like on interviews, you kind of lose a little bit of authenticity as a result, as a result of over-preparing, you know, 
Well, possibly. And, and then sometimes I will, you know, I'm inclined to say what I think that they, what, what I think they want to hear. Right. And it may not be what I personally prefer, what I personally F I prefer, but it's kind of like, this is what's going to TE work, TE work for, for the tribe. And, you know, I, I kind of take a more pragmatic approach to, to job searching. I'm like, you know, it doesn't have to be my burning passion. I just want to earn a living and be financially secure. Right, right. Because if I'm not financially secure, I'm not going to feel emotionally okay with my life. You know, I need that control. You know, I don't want that chaos of right. not knowing where my next paycheck is going to come from. So there's I, that too. I, I feel like um, over preparing, it, it's, it's not a bad thing per se, like preparing for the interview, but like there, there, is, there is an area in your life where using any would come in handy. And any is very tied to consume, right? Like I'm, I'm, cons- I, I'm, I'm consumed first. Like, yeah, when like- people play and consume, like for me, it would be N- N-I-F-E, consume, and then N-E-T-E, play. So, so I can do the N-E-T-E, play thing right. pretty well, but, but then the, the F-I-N-E, consume part. Um, because that's my demon. Can you kind of elaborate more on how that works for you? Because I'm not quite sure I kind of fully grasp F I N E consume. Yeah, sure. So, I mean, consume when 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 both F I and N E are together. Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. I can definitely. Um, okay. I can even give you. I can even give you S I example for that. So. Um, sure. So, so um, I, I, as far as I remember, the moment I learned how to read, like I was in kindergarten. The moment I learned how to read, the first thing I did is I went to the library and I started reading books on dinosaurs, uh, outer space, um, you know, um, underwater creatures. Like I just loved, like it's, I, I was doing it for me. Like no one told me to do it. Like I, I right, right. Those, those were so fi. Those were my interests. I was interested in learning more about dinosaurs, outer space, and sea creatures. Right. Mm-hmm. So that's where like my like I wanted to learn those because for me, like cause I I enjoy right. reading reading about those stuff. Right. So, okay. So basically, when as I grew up, I always went to the library, and I would always get like I like I, I I would I really have a stack of ten books, and I would read books on you know comics. Um, I I have I have this obsession with survival, so I love books like, you know like oh, I yeah. have you read the Hatchet? Hatchet. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I love those kind of books where like yeah, yeah. It's you versus the wild or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then I I just love reading about you know all sorts of different like nonfiction stuff. Like I love, I love to read about like geography, the weather, like mm-hmm. how, what creates tornadoes, what creates hurricanes, you know, yeah. like, and I was just doing it for myself. Do you like just looking at maps? I also, I'm a, I'm a huge traveler. I've been to 80, I've been to 78 countries. So. Oh yeah. I think I heard you mention yeah. that in one of your videos. Yeah. With, um, with wow, big, I'm impressed. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's my thing though. That's my FI, right? That's my passion. So, um, so, yeah, because you're because you're pretty young. I mean, if you already visited seventy eight countries, I mean, yeah, I'm in my mid thirties. So yeah, and yeah. I'm just a little I'm just a little older than you. I just turned forty. So um, and I've only visited two: U.S. and Canada. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got some catching little. up to do. Yeah. Where in the U.S. do you live, by the way? Um, near Minneapolis. Minneapolis. So that's the East Coast, right? No, 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 Minnesota. So so it's in the. Um, it's in the Midwest region, part of the United States. Okay. Is that near Saskatchewan? No, it, it's farther east of that. So, so north, north would be... Um, Manitoba? Manitoba. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's, this is going to sound really funny, but like I'm a big... Like, do, you, do you know WWE or WWF? The wrestling, w- the wrestling, the TV show, the wrestling TV show? I'm not really familiar with it. Oh, no. Okay, okay no, never mind. Forget it. Um, don't, don't worry about this then. Um, so basically, um, what I'm trying to get at is when, when I'm using my, um, my, my consume, I'm, I'm pretty much just learn because I, I have, to, I really like learning. So mm-hmm. do you like, do you have like, though, it seems like you get your consume from people though. Like you, you do consume, but you get it from people, not, not from like, well, yeah, but, yeah, yeah, but I, I do get it from books and, and sources because I relate to what you're saying about, um, F I N E consume because if there's something that interests me personally, yeah, I I will go and research it and I'll and I'll get books from the library. I'll do what you said or I'll I'll Google it. 
I'll Google it uh, online, which is why I was kind of, kind of a bit surprised when, when they said that I was missing, missing consume. And, and again, I think it was, I suppose it's maybe because they thought I was more energy dominant than information dominant or that I had both SI and, and TE doubly activated because they were seeing a lot of that from, from my video. So when, when you read those books, do you read the whole book and you retain the information that you read from the books? Um, it depends, it depends on the book. I mean, I mean, if the book is really interesting and I'm interested in everything, yeah, I'll read the, read the whole book, yeah. but, but sometimes I'm just reading it for, for a specific piece of information and I'll just jump, jump to the section that has, has what I'm looking for and, and ignore the rest. It, it, it really depends on the topic and, and the book. Okay. So you, you don't read it from, you know, start to finish, essentially. It's not always. Not always, but you've done it. I mean, I mean novels I do because, because if you, you know, don't read it from front to back, you're going to get, you're going to get spoilers or you might not understand how they got from A to B because you didn't read it sequentially. I see. So if it's a fictional book, you'll read it from start to finish. But if it's like yes. a nonfiction, you'll just get the specific information. Right. Yeah. It, it doesn't seem like you have demon. It doesn't seem like you have fourth consumed and maybe it's a demon, but maybe it's not fourth. Yeah, yeah, and and I mean, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm, yeah, yeah, it is something I'm gonna talk to Dave about. Cause. Yeah, yeah, because it doesn't doesn't seem like it. Now, when when you watch TV or you um, read books, are you do you like things that are more imaginative, like fantasy and like you know, like Lord of the Rings or yes, like Star Trek? I do. Yes, I see. So you you do know like those kind of fantasy? They came from someone's fi and ne essentially, you know, because they, they mm -hmm. were. They're imagination based, right? Right, right. They're made up. Yeah. And it seems like you're really attracted to that, like, like you know, Harry Potter or that kind yeah, of. Yeah, yeah. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Because 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 I I, I do like um, but like imaginary worlds and then imagining what what life would be like if we yeah. lived in this imaginary world or we had these magical we have these magical powers, even though I, I know it's re removed yeah. from reality. I, yeah, so, I, I do find it interesting. Yeah. Um, so one of my close friends back in college, she was an ISTJ also. And exact same thing that you just told me, she absolutely loves sci-fi. Like she loves Star Trek, Star Wars, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, and, and she was just a huge nerd. She goes to Comic Con and like, she just absolutely loved this stuff. And she was SD reporter like you. So I yeah. just find it fascinating that SD reporters are attracted to, you know, this sort of stuff, you know? Okay. Well, let me ask you, are you, do you ever find that you're interested in ST kind of stuff? Yeah. Like I, I like I said, I, like, I, I like to, you know, read the news. Like uh, recently, for example, there was a car, there was an air, airline crash um, with um, Ethiopian airlines. I don't know if you've heard it in the, in the, in the news. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That was awful. It's like. Right. And so we're actually flying on Ethiopian on, on my upcoming vacation. So, and uh, we're, we're flying on, you know, several different airlines for our up, me and my girlfriend's upcoming vacation. So I wanted to get the facts. So I actually started researching thoroughly and found out that it was a specific model of airplane. It was the Boeing, I think, 737 MAX 8 that crashed. So mm -hmm. then I, I went to my itinerary and I looked at every, and I was, I was flying on so many different segments, right? Because I collect countries. Mm -hmm. so I have 11 segments in total that I had to look into to see if I was flying on any Boeing 737 MAX 8 because two airplanes on that specific airline crashed within, you know, in very short time span. Um, the Indonesian Lions Air was also on that Boeing 737 MAX 8 that crashed. And also the Ethiopian airline that crashed was also on the same airplane. So two of the same airplane crashed and they're both new models. They, they're newly purchased and they both crashed the same way, which is during takeoff, like shortly wow. after takeoff. <laughs> now, I went to my itinerary one by one, which is something that ENFPs will probably never do is look at the details, right? But I, I did it because I, I have masculine SI, even though I'm an mm -hmm. ENFP. Yeah. And turns out one of my segments is on that airplane. And, and, and now I'm trying to think, oh my God, do I need to change my booking then? Because this is, this is the airplane that crashed. And this is the one that's, you know, China, China and, and, um, and uh, Ethiopia. And there was one more country, a bunch of European countries has now grounded the specific airplane. Like this oh, airplane. yeah. Because they, yeah. they have to do um, investigations. Mm -hmm. But um, I just found that very fascinating that, you know, like kind of get, I'm getting all the, the facts. So I'm, I, I, I'm fascinated by it. I, I do like to, to watch the news. 
Um, but I, I won't go and, and do it myself because I think it's, for me, it's way too stressful. Like if, if I can show you my table right now, you'll probably get a heart attack. It's just so messy. You know, like my, my girlfriend's even worse than me because my girlfriend's an ENFP, but she has feminine SI. So every time I come home, oh my God, like the place is like, like a huge tornado. I have to like push everything aside. And so do you know stuff. her, do you know her full objective personality type? I don't know what she is, but she's definitely ENFP because she absolutely hates control. Okay. Is control. she, is she a jumper ENFP or is she the, the NI, the NEFI ENFP? You know what? This is the one thing that I'm confused about with, uh, with op because, um, my girlfriend is a hundred percent self above tribe, but, mm -hmm. but she uses FI so much, like so much, but well, then she's probably NEFI. But when she uses FI, she does a little, she does get her identity a little bit confused. She'll question her identity actually, oh. which is confusing because I never confuse my identity. Like I'm pretty solid. Like I, I wonder if maybe she's like low sleep. No, she has because part of that. Those issues with identity are they're from the sleep animal. So maybe she's like sleep demon. I I I I I really don't think so. My my girlfriend has a really strong and um F I S I co combination because when you tell her to visualize something, not only can she visualize it, she can feel that exact thing that happened. You know, to, to the very sensory detail of of that visual vision. Yeah, and, and she I can do that too. I, I can sometimes like I'll think of of a memory in my head, and then I can just kind of relive all the feelings and vividness and and i think it might be because both the si and the fi are masculine so like i got strong recall i have masculine fi and si but yeah. i don't feel anything when i visualize i don't feel i absolutely feel nothing when i visualize okay. well I, i'm just thinking more of past events not not just picturing a scene, right. but, but like, like a past event. Exactly. The, I don't feel anything in the past event. Okay. I, okay. I recall it. I don't feel zero. I have a sleep last. Really? Okay. But I have, right. no, I have no problem with my identity. Like, I know exactly who I am, what I want to do. I, yeah. know what I, I know what I want to do in the next 10 to 20 years of my life. Like, I, I'm pretty, I, I have like a, I kind of use my NE to kind of visualize. Like okay. The life that I, N -E -F -I, I've used them together. Visualize yeah. the future and kind of like see how I, I would feel if like, if I went this direction with my life versus if I went this direction, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So I kind of yeah. like, I know exactly the direction I want to go as a result of using those two combinations. But my, my girlfriend really has trouble with, 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 with this kind of stuff, you know? So uh, she, she can visualize, but her visualization will change, you know, like she'll, 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 she'll sleep on it or she'll imagine it or she'll visualize it and, and she'll freak out usually. You know, there's like a, there's a freak out. Well, I don't have any freak out with that. Mm -hmm. um, now I, I want, I, so basically I, what I'm trying to get at here is kind of like how to use NE and FI together. Cause that seems to be like what, like the missing piece of the puzzle for you is mm -hmm. if, if, if what David Chan did say is accurate. Um, yeah. So have you ever thought of doing like fictional writing, like writing stories and stuff um, as an exercise of imagination? No, I haven't. I, I don't feel like I'm imaginative enough for that. I'm, I see myself more as like, like a, I could see myself like writing blog posts or, or more like on the lines of technical writing. But, I, but I remember like, like in school, like I, I, I always struggled with creative, with, with creative writing because I felt like what I was doing was just taking something that happened in my life or, or I witnessed happening to somebody else. And then, then I just, then I just modify a couple details and pass it off as a, as an original story. It's just kind of hard for me to be totally original and think out to, to think out the box, but I greatly admire and, and envy people that can do that. Yeah. Because if you look at uh, JK Rollins or uh, you mm -hmm. know, Game of Thrones, you know, like how did they come up with that stuff? Right. They just pulled it right. out. Yeah, they just made it up. It's a complete made up story, but yet it's right. so it's so well connected. Like, you know, like usually when those stories there's a connection. And it's quite and it's quite detailed too. The world is so detailed. I mean, when, when you think about it, like you can vividly picture picture it. So they Well, it seems like all the writers are INFPs from what I've seen, you know? Mm -hmm. And they might be even be they're 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 using their, you know. FI imaginations, NE to come up with like connections and then SI to come up with the details, right? Right. Bouncing between those three kind of functions and 
coming yeah. out of this rich, rich, really rich world, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So it seems like maybe you need to kind of take a page from the Aina piece also and like find a way to come up, come up, like not, not, not saying you'll ever be good at this, but maybe as a way to like exercise using kind of like N, uh, N E and F I is to like, is to just come up with this rich detailed world. So you kind of have to turn off your S I. I don't know how you're going to do that. Yeah. That the, S, the S I has to play like kind of like the supporting role. You know, the story has to come first and then the S I kind of creates the, the settings, the details mm -hmm. after, after a story. Mm -hmm. But yeah. not, not before the story, because when you go, when you read Harry Potter or you watch Game of Thrones, you, you remember the story, right? Not so much the details, right? Of the, of the settings. Like you happen, you, I, don't, I don't know if that's true for you, but like you, you, you mostly remember like the climax. Yeah, the I mostly remember, we mostly remember the story. I don't remember every single detail, but, but I will remember, remember some, especially if, I don't know, the detail somehow impacted me emotionally or it was unusual in some way like like if like if somebody describes somebody like 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 having a, an unusual physical appearance for example i'll remember that i'll kind of remember what's what's unusual and what's not the norm you know then i'll remember it yeah it's i'm, 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 I'm trying to give you something practical like something yes. that's, that's <laughs> practical Okay. It seems like creative writing is something that would help you because it's definitely, you, you know, kind of like putting the repetition into that area. Um, like, because you, you never really know how, how good you can get at something until you practice it, right? Like, I'll give right. you an example. Like, um, I have a travel blog that I, I've been running now for, for almost four years. Like, this coming May is my fourth year anniversary mm -hmm. of running, running my travel blog. But when I first wrote my travel blog, people actually said it was really embarrassing. Like my, my, my friends who are ENFJs, who has strong FE, you know, you know, people with SF, they like popularity, right? So yeah. they would say, you know, it's a little bit embarrassing. Maybe you want to like make it nicer or make the story better. Or I don't know, something like something to make it nicer, right? Like have better pictures. But I said to myself, you know what? I'm just going to keep moving because I think that if I just keep trying, I'm going to get, I'm going to, I'm going to automatically improve with just practice. Right, know? right. So like, I don't know what's going to happen in the future. I don't see that. I don't have a vision of the future. I don't have that NE vision, but I just trusted that if I practice, practice makes perfect and it's, it's going to improve. So even I, I had my sister proofread my, some of my writing before and she, she said, I can't read this Kendrick. It's, it's too painful. It's just so bad. You know, your grammar is horrific. Your, your, your sentence structure is terrible. The logic of your story doesn't make sense. Um, you know, it's not cohesive, it's not cohesive, but then four years later, she's like, it, this is not the same person that was writing four years ago. Like it's, it's really good. Like I, I like it now, mm -hmm. but it's because I practice it. Right. So maybe, you right. know, you know, there's like a popular saying you overestimate what you can achieve in one to two months, but you underestimate what you can achieve in one to two years. Oh, interesting. Yeah. 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 And so maybe in your mind, you're thinking kind of short terms, like, yeah, maybe if you sit down today and you grab a piece of paper and you write a story, yeah, maybe it's going to be garbage. It probably will. It probably will be terrible, but two years from now, maybe it'll be better better than today at least you know mm -hmm. so that's like kind of like one practical way you can practice you know using you know introvert feeling and extrovert intuition together which is kind of like the missing piece of the puzzle for you uh supposedly um now for NEs, for any NE itself a lot of it too is goal setting right like so what is your ambition for your future yeah well well the thing the thing is is that i i feel like like when I say like I know what I want, it's kind of more like I know what I want in the moment. Like like I'm in the mood to do this, or maybe next week or something. But in terms of like like the like the distant future, yeah, I kind of feel like 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 is there a real purpose to this whole real purpose to this whole whole thing? And, and and like all I all I know is that I want to do something that will positively impact society in some way, and I just want to you know be happy and fulfilled and live as long as possible. But but what that exactly is, I don't really have a good sense of that. If I'm going to be honest with myself, self, I don't. And, and I kind of envy these people that that I see that that that's sort of they have that clear purpose or or niche in life or they found it early and and they absolutely love it and 
and it's just like benefiting them and benefiting the world, the world around them. Like they've always known that they wanted to do this, this career or something rather than just kind of falling into it and having it be good enough. Um, so did, you know you, did you watch the newest um, video on the, on Mel Robbins? Not yet. I, are, are you talking about the, 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 for the class? Yes. Not, not, not yet. I, I, I did watch some, some, you know, videos of her trying to, trying to figure out her, figure out her type, but not the class video yet. Um, All right. So, so, so she, ha she had some really interesting ideas. So, so it, it, if you watch the video, her obsession is that five second rule. Yeah. Yeah. I really like that. Yeah. I mean, so um, basically if you're using intuition kind of like to picture your future, it's almost like a five second rule, you know, like you mm -hmm. don't, you don't, you don't overthink it. It's like, it's yeah. like a snap of a finger. So like, yeah. I, I'll give you like a few concrete examples. Okay. If you had $10 million, what would you be doing instead with your life? Um, travel more. Boom. There you go. So there you go. Now you can visualize traveling more. Yeah. What is your bucket list destinations? Um, Hawaii. Hawaii. Um, Europe, like Paris, Paris Rome. Rome. Um, I want to do a cruise to the Caribbean. Yeah. Um, I want to do a, I want to do an Alaskan cruise. Oh, you're you're probably gonna go to my city then, to Vancouver, because that's where that <laughs> <the> cruise is. <laughs> yeah, like along that that shoreline uh, up to yeah. June, all that that area. I've heard yeah. it's supposed to be really beautiful. Yeah. Anything else? Um. I kind of want to visit all the national parks in the United States. Yeah. Australia. Australia. Okay. Yeah. So how did you feel like visualizing all these places that you're, you can go to? Um, well, just like there, there, there's so much of the world I haven't seen yet. And yeah, but I mean, like I actually, when you were talking about it, your eyes lit up. Like, Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it's almost like, like kind of like a kid, you know, like, someone that's using NEFI a lot, you're like, oh my God, like the possibilities that, that yeah. happen, right? You know, imagine going to, to Europe, going to Paris, going on an Alaska cruise. Go to Mexico and practice my Spanish. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There you go. You're using your NE right now. Yeah. Possibilities. Like, Lots of possibilities. But if, if we go back to, to kind of ST, SI, do you, do you feel like this is realistic or not? Um, yes and no. I mean, you have to have money for it. You have to have time. Yeah. You got to make sure. Well, and for me, I want to make sure I'm safe. <laughs> like, 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 like it's a safe place to travel. And I, th I think all the places I've suggested are, are, are fairly, fairly safe. You know, I wouldn't, I probably wouldn't go to like somewhere where, where it was like, like, like a war torn country where there's, where there's famine and stuff or bad drinking water. Cause, cause I kind of worry about, I kind of worry about my own safety. Well, maybe I would, but I would have to research it quite a bit first to know what I'm getting into. Okay. So <laughs> um, just, just like kind of like having this conversation right now, I just, I just, I just remembered something vividly that happened to one of my, my ISTJ friends actually. So she, she got hit by a big tidal wave um, at some time of her, in her life where um, her, ex, her ex boyfriend started dating someone else and she was absolutely devastated because she still had feelings for the guy. And, mm -hmm. when, and when they broke up, it, was, it, was, it, was a, it wasn't a bad breakup. Like, like she still liked them when they broke up. They broke up because of distance. Like she, she didn't live in that. So they met, I think, in Eastern Canada and she moved to West, back to Western Canada. So they kind of moved, uh, broke up. For, as a result of geography, not because they didn't like each other, each other anymore. But a few years later, he ended up dating someone else and she was absolutely devastated. And she got hit by a tidal wave. So in, at this point, she started consuming a lot of information to kind of figure out how she can, you know, either get him back or find someone else. Um, and she stumbled into something called The Secret. I don't know if you've heard of it. Uh, is it, is it, there's a book called The Secret. Yeah, it's it's by a book. Rhonda Byrne. I, I haven't I haven't read it, but I, but I've heard about it. So well, you don't need to read it. You can just watch. There's a, they, they they also have a video version of it, I, which I okay. think is exactly better than the book, in my opinion. Yeah. So you can just watch the video. But basically, she started following the secret, and she she actually told where's me the, about. Where's the link to the video? Do you have the link? 
I don't have the link to the video. I th- you, you, I'm pretty sure you can find it if you Google though. Or just, 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 just Google the secret video and it should come sure, up. I think so. Okay. That's what I did when I, when I watch it. Um, yeah. So she watched it and she told me about it, and, which is kind of funny because I'm the ENFP, right? I'm supposed to be the one gathering all these ideas, but she's yeah. the one who told me, uh, oh, mainly because she was in a tidal wave state, right? So, um, so I started following it too. And we, bo- we both started doing kind of like the stuff that they talked about in the secret, which is like, you know, like visualizing, you know, the, the, the very thing that you want in your life and you should have a vision board and you should cut out some pictures of the stuff that you want and grab like a poster and like and glue it on a poster board, right? And you can put specific metrics to like how much money you want to make or whatever and just stick it to your board. So we both started doing that. And I, I was absolutely shocked at what happened because um, the moment she started doing that, things are just started moving in her life and also in my life. She started, I think when you start imagining things, you start tunnel visioning on that thing that you're imagining, right? And you start changing your behavior based on, on the stuff that you're, you're seeing. Even if you're not looking at it with intent, just like even in your subconscious, just you're seeing it in the corner of your eye. Like you see this poster, right? Let's say yeah. you, see, you see a cruise ship, right? On, mm-hmm. on the poster. You're going to start thinking cruise ship in your head, like cruise ship, cruise ship, cruise ship, cruise ship, right? <laughs> and then like yeah. maybe, maybe in your break at work, you're going to go to your Google and start looking at like cruise ship deals and stuff. Like this yeah. is, you're going to track it, but you know, there's more science to it. Like you're just obsessing over it essentially. So long story short, uh, my friend, she started, you know, working out more, started getting more fit. And guess what? She found a boyfriend and that, that boyfriend is, they have a kid together now. And, um, and for me, everything that I put in the vision board, it's pretty much come true. Like I'm working in the, I'm working in the fitness field and that's kind of something I put on, on my vision board. You know, I put, I wanted to have a girlfriend. I got a girlfriend. Like it's, it's, it was like, it was really yeah, like, wow. it was really like, it's, it's kind yeah, of good for you. Good for you. Oh. Yeah. But it's really, it was really creepy though. You know, like, like it was just like, it was literally a board and you put pictures on it. And the thing is, you just looked at it every day and it kind of, you kind of tunnel vision in it, you know, you know what I mean? Like we use our imagination first, right? So step one, imaginations, like what, what do I want in my life? So for you, for example, you want to travel more. So basically for you, if you make a, a vision board, you would like cut out pictures of a cruise ship or, or Alaska, just take a pic, like, make sure it's a color picture and then, you know, stick it in a board and just hang it on your wall. And every day you just take, just, stay, just look at it and by kind of like automatic, like behavior, like you're going to start looking for travel deals. And mm-hmm. guess what? You are going to find those travel deals because like cruise ships, are not ex- that expensive. Like I found a cruise ship deal once for only $270 Canadian, which is, it was 190 us, I think for five day Caribbean cruise. Oh, five. wow. Yeah. Wow. yeah. And it was because I was obsessing over travel and, and I found it, you know? So when you obsess over this kind of stuff, you, and that's th- not much more expensive than getting objectively typed. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. That's that's how much it costs for you to get objectively <laughs> yeah. Exactly. That's, that's, I hope they're not watching this. <laughs> well, they they've just seen some of my videos, so maybe. <laughs> <laughs> no, it it was well worth the, it was well worth the money because I think because I have that self knowledge now and I can make it work for me. You know. Yeah. You know, to improve your life, you kind of have to know your demons and and know how to work with your demons. So. The message, guys, don't get typed by David Chan. Go on a cruise instead. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're going to wrap this up pretty soon, uh, Laura. But do you, yeah. have, do you have any last-minute questions for me before we wrap up? Um, it's just been really great talking with you. And, yeah, I, I, I just like, like – I love ENFPs, you know, talking to ENFPs. And, and it's kind of interesting because we have – because we have two opposite types, but yet we, we use the same functions and, and it, we both have high play energy and yeah. we have the same modalities. So, so yes, we do. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and yeah. And then, and getting some, some ENFP tips. So it's been great. Yeah. And you know, most of the SJ, most of the friends that I make that are the reporter type are actually ISTJs. So I don't know yeah. if it's just like a natural attraction to someone mm-hmm. that's your opposite and you're curious about them. Yeah, it could be, could be. Yeah. All right, yeah. Laura. Well, it's been a pleasure okay. and um, I'm going to go hit the stop record button now, but it was really okay. interviewing you right today. All right. Thank you. All right. Bye. Okay. One second.